Welcome, my friends, to another Project Zomboy Tips and Tricks video. My name is Drunk on Life. I had to comment on my last tips video that went something like this. As a new player, I would have killed for a video that explained the little things of operation, like how to cook, how to use washers and dryers, combining soaps, how to work on cars, etc., etc. Well, Retro Game Monster, your wish is my command. The Pros Pro has your back. So today we're going to do a complete Project Zomboid Beginner's Guide to All Things Cooking. Giddy up! Here to help is our culinary ex expert, Rhonda Marsh, who also happens to be a nutritionist, so we can see what we can get the most bang for our buck when cooking delicious meals in the Zambi apocalypse. A kitchen is not complete with all the various utensils needed to cook food, so therefore, we're going to need one of the following. A cooking pot for delicious stews and soups, a roasting pan for roasting, a frying pan for scrumptious stir fries, and finally a baking pan for savory pies and sweet cakes. The process of cooking is simple. You have to have at least one ingredient and said cooking utensil close by. You simply right click on the cooking utensil and then simp start adding ingredients. Well, let's back up a bit, survivors. I'm sure you're wondering why anyone would want to turn Project Zomboid, a game about the end of times as we know it, into a bastardized Sims recreation. Truth is, cooking matters. It increases happiness and calorie count. While it's true you can eat corn straight out of a can or pick yourself a mater out of the garden for a quick snack, you will vastly improve the sustenance of said item simply by going through the process of cooking. And not only will you get more mileage out of cooking food calorie wise, you'll also be a happier survivor doing so. Yay! To illustrate my point, a can of soup will give you minus 25 on hunger while simply sticking it in a pot will decrease hunger by 30, thirst by minus 30, and unhappiness by minus 20. A threefer! The holy trinity of lip-smacking goodness, and this is just by sticking a can into a pot. Now, I know we didn't come here to talk about how to cook a can of soup, though. Now, did we, Survivor? Let's get our hands dirty with the intricacies of culinary genius. First off, let's discuss the differences between making a stir-fry out of a skillet, or a stew, or a soup, or a roast out of a roasting pan. There are no differences. You can use up to six items and two condiments in each dish which will make you several meals and as well as decrease boredom and unhappiness. The key here is variety. Too much of one thing will increase unhappiness, even though it will also decrease hunger. Every good chef knows too much of a good thing could be bad, as Rhonda here is discovering her stew, soup, roast, and stir-fry, while all nutritionally dense, aren't necessarily delish. Yuck! But once we cook these items, our hunger will go down even more. One final note on cooking. Things like rice and pasta alone will increase in happiness uh, once cooked, so in order to fix this, we'll have to go through the same process of adding ingredients to the pot. So in other words, you want to cook the rice first or the pasta first and then add stuff to it afterwards and recook it. Every Zomboid chef will eventually want to round out their culinary proficiency with a little baking. In order to do this, we'll have to first find and read the book on how to make dough, but once found, we'll become a baking pro that will even make Gordon Ramsay proud. To make both pie dough and bread, you need water, flour, butter, and salt. To make bread dough, you need all the above plus a rolling pin. Oh, I almost forgot. To, with pie dough, you're also going to need to find a bake pan. Now, in American terms, this is a pot pie. Savory, not sweet. And once we have the pie dough with the pie baking pan, we can start adding all the savory goodness into our pot pie. Cook her up, and dinner is served. Baking bread is done the same way, except once it's done, you can slice it into slices and create a sandwich or a burger. Delish. Finally, we have cake batter, which requires an empty bowl, flour, butter, sugar, milk, yeast, and eggs. Now, once everything starts to spoil, I don't know where you're going to find the milk. Maybe there's a mod or something that might fix that. This is done in a two-step process, a lot like a pie, where first you create the cake batter and then place it into the baking pan. From there, you can take fresh fruits and add them to your cake, and there you go. So let's say you don't have a heat source to cook with. What then? How about a nice delicious salad? Salad, like pies, come in two varieties, sweet and savory. Savory salads can include meat and vegetables while a fruit salad comes from either forage berries or fruits found in the produce aisle in refrigerators. Same rules apply, although eating a well-designed fruit salad is a happiness bomb in your mouth. Yum! And one last thing. At level 7 cooking, you can cook with rotten food, although I gotta say, it won't alleviate hunger as much as it could make you happier, which is weird. But then again, if you're using rotten food to make a stew or soup, I imagine nearly anything would make you happy at that point. Just saying. Honestly, 
Rotten food could be best used for compost to make more food, but that is a discussion for another time. So there you have it, Survivor. All the cooking details you need to become a world-class chef in Project Zomboid. As for me, I think I'm going to enjoy this little slice of strawberry cake while I watch the world end before my eyes. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and like the video on your way out. My name is Drunk on Life. Bye-bye for now.